Hello and welcome to MBKM Models, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow for more aircraft documentaries and model build videos. The Bristol Bloodhound The missile that was built in Bristol and became an airfix kit is a British ramjet powered surface to air missile developed during the 1950s. It served as the UK's main air defence weapon into the 1990s and was in large scale service with the Royal Air Force and the forces of four other countries. The ramjet that powered Bristol's surface to air SAM missile was still made at Rolls Royce when I was an apprentice. This was some of the most fiddly sheet metalwork I had ever seen and was not the easiest of jobs. Part of sweeping changes to the UK's defence posture. The Bloodhound was intended to protect the RAF's V bomber bases to preserve the deterrent force, attacking bombers that made it past the Lightning Interceptor Force. Bloodhound Mark I entered service in December 1958, the first British guided weapon to enter full operational service. This was part of Stage 1 upgrades to the defensive systems, in the later Stage 2. Both Bloodhound and the fighters would be replaced by a longer range missile code named Blue Envoy. When this was ultimately cancelled in 1957, parts of its design were worked into Bloodhound Mark II, roughly doubling the range of the missile. The Mark I began to be replaced by the Mark II starting in 1964. Mark II performance was such that it was also selected as the interceptor missile in the Violet Friend ABM system although this was ultimately cancelled. The Bloodhound Mark II was a relatively advanced missile for its era, roughly comparable to the US's Nike Hercules in terms of range and performance, but using an advanced continuous wave semi-active radar homing system, offering excellent performance against electronic countermeasures and low altitude targets. It also featured a digital computer for fire control that was also used for readiness checks and various calculations. It was a relatively large missile, which limited it to stationary defensive roles similar to the Hercules or the Soviet's S-25 bucket. Although Sweden operated its bloodhounds in a semi-mobile form, Bloodhound shares much in common with the English Electric Thunderbird, including some of the radar systems and guidance features. Thunderbird was smaller and much more mobile, seeing service with the British Army and several other forces. The two missiles served in tandem for some time, until the shorter-range role of the Thunderbird was replaced by the much smaller and fast-acting BAC Rapier starting in 1971. Bloodhound's longer range kept it in service until the threat of bomber attack by the Soviet Union disappeared with the dissolution of the Union in 1991. The last Mark II missile squadron stood down in July 1991, although Swiss examples remained operational until 1999. In 1956, Second World War Battle of Britain Ace, Wing Commander Frederick Higginson DFC. DFM was recruited and placed in charge of the new guided missile defense group inside Bristol aircraft, charged with sales and service of the new systems. Higginson was awarded an OBE in 1963 for the overseas sales that Bloodhound gained, and promoted to the board of Bristol aircraft in the same year. The initial Bloodhound Mark I deployment consisted of nine missile sites, RAF Dunholm Lodge, RAF Watton, RAF Marham, RAF Rattles Den, RAF Woolfox Lodge, RAF Carnaby, RAF War Boys, RAF Brayton, RAF Woodhall Spa and RAF Mason with a trial site at RAF Northcotes. The primary reason for these sites being chosen was the defence of the nearby V-bomber stations. Australian deployments started with No. 30 Squadron RAAF at RAAF Base Williamtown in January 1961. A detachment formed in Darwin in 1965. By 1968, the Bloodhound Mark I missiles were obsolete, and both elements of the squadron had been disbanded by the end of November 1968. Swiss deployments started in 1964 and by 1967 six sites were operational with a total of nine firing units. 
these remained operational until 1999 when they were removed from service, and one of the sites at Google was declared a National Historical Property. After the RAF passed the nuclear deterrent troll to the Royal Navy in 1970, all Bloodhound systems within the UK were withdrawn and either stored or transferred to RAF Germany for airfield defence with No. 25 Squadron. The possibility of low-level sneak attack by bombers or cruise missiles led to a reappraisal of UK air defences, resulting in No. 85 Squadron forming at West Raynham on 18 December 1975. With deployment of the rapier missile to Germany, Bloodhounds were returned to England in 1983 and were in operation at four additional sites, Bordsea, Barkston Heath, Whiten and Wattisham. These installations used both the fixed Type 87 radar Marconi Scorpion and the mobile Type 86 radars for anti-fire light of their German deployments, with some being mounted on a 30-foot tower to improve visibility and reduce ground reflections. In 1990 as the Cold War wound down the remaining missiles were concentrated at West Trainham and Wattisham with plans to operate them until 1995 but these were later removed in 1991. In Southeast Asia, the Bloodhound was deployed with the RAF No. 65 Squadron based at RAF Selita, Singapore as part of the RAF Far East Air Force and with 33 Squadron at RAAF Butterworth. With the withdrawal of British military forces based in Singapore under the UK's East of Suez policy announced in 1968, Singapore bought the entire Bloodhound assets of No. 65 Squadron and established the Singapore Air Defence Command's 170 Squadron. The squadron was disbanded and its missiles retired at an official ceremony in March 1990. The main missile is a long cylinder of magnesium frames and aluminium alloy skin with a prominent O-give nose cone at the front and some boat tailing at the rear. Small aluminium covered wooden cropped delta wings are mounted midpoint providing pitch and roll control by pivoting in unison or independently with additional steering provided by differential fuel feed to each of the ramjets. Two smaller rectangular fixed surfaces were mounted in line with the main wings, almost at the rear of the missile. The boost engines are held together as a single assembly by a metal ring at the rear of the missile. Each motor has a small hook on the ring as well as similar one at the front holding it to the missile body. After firing, when the thrust of the rockets falls below the thrust of the now lit ram jets, the boosters slide rearward until the front hook disengages from the missile body. The boosters are then free to rotate around their attachment to the metal ring, and are designed to rotate outward away from the fuselage. In action, they fold open like the petals on a flower greatly increasing drag and pulling the entire four booster assembly away from the missile body. Small inlets on the roots of the stub wings holding the engines allow air into the missile body for two tasks. Two ram air turbines driving turbopumps generate hydraulic power for the wing control system and a fuel pump that feeds the engines. Small R inlet tubes provide ram air to pressurize the fuel tanks. Kerosene fuel is held in two large rubber bag tanks in bays either side of the wing bay where the wings are attached. Electrical power was provided by a molten salt battery. At room temperature, this would be inert and suitable for long-term storage without degradation, but was heated to its working temperature by a pyrotechnic heat source ignited at launch. Although in tests the Bloodhound had executed direct hits on target bombers flying at 50,000 feet 15,000 meters, Mark II production models in common with many air-to-air -air and surface-to-air missiles of that period and after, had a proximity-fused continuous rod warhead known as the K-11A1 designed to destroy attacking aircraft without requiring a direct hit. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening and until next time.